Thanks for joining me today on this gentastic journey, including card crafting. Today, I'm excited to share with you more ways to use our pattern paper. I love pattern paper. I tend to hoard it just like the rest of you, but some of it I just don't envision how I can use it on my cards. So I am flipping through some of my pattern paper that I've had around for a really long time, looking for some papers that have either a green tint to it or it could be good for some flowers. I'm going to cut out some flower shapes, die cut out some flower shapes. And so I'm going to pull out some design paper or pattern paper, whatever you call it, and I'm going to make sure that I have lots of different colors but in similar families so when I have some of these flowers that I want to put pieces on top of each other I then have similar color families so you see here I have some more autumn colors and then obviously the greens are going to be for some of the leaves and greenery and vines and things like that so anything you have will work and if you have old paper that you've done some backgrounds on it and you aren't using it for whatever reason throw that into the mix <laughs> And then we're going to use, in this video, we're going to use these to cut out some flowers and some butterflies and, like I said, some leaves and greenery. Plenty of things that you can cut out. If you don't have flowers, whatever your most often used die cutouts, that would be what I would use for this project. And again, this is a way for us to use our pattern paper and also save us a little bit of time when we want to add really pretty flowers and butterflies and things like that to our cards. And I'm a big flower girl, so I like to use flowers. And these are what I hold my dies in. It's They have a magnetic sheet and it's just a plastic envelope. And I get them off of Amazon. What you can do with these is whatever I don't use, I can stick in the back of that envelope, in the back of the dies. And then when I'm looking for some greenery or some leaves or whatever these are, I can then go to the back of that envelope and I have pre-made pieces that I can use with some of my flowers or whatever my card design is. So here I'm taking out my scotch removable tape and I'm just going to tape these to the page so that I can die cut them out. And I'm not going to show you this with every one, but I wanted to show you what my thought process is with this. So I just like them because there's so many on there. I don't want them moving around and possibly getting on top of each other. I have a fairly small die cutting machine and so this six by six page fits perfectly on it. I'm also going to fill up this next sheet. And all I'm doing here is just cutting out all these different shapes and we're going to have lots of different colors, lots of different versions of it. And instead of having to take out our ink or take out our markers or colored pencils, we're going to have color all over these gorgeous leaves without even having to do anything special. We're just using some design paper or pattern paper that we might not have otherwise used. Here I'm turning this over because one of them didn't cut out for some reason, but everything else cut out perfectly. Sometimes we'll have that and I probably just didn't I either had my die cutting plate maybe was not on perfectly for that one, but everything else looks like it turned out. So I'm just going to push these all out. And I had this pretty well sped up because this is just giving you a general idea of my process. So I tend to do this if I'm not ready to make a card. If I have a rainy day out, then I will do some of this where I just do kind of the work ahead stuff. So next time I want to use some greens, use some leaves, I have all this pre-cut out. And then sometimes it just gives me the inspiration I need. And so next time I need a sympathy card or a birthday card or whatever I'm looking for, I already have all this stuff done ahead. And that is a really good feeling. And it also just gives me some ideas, especially like look at this paper that has a bunch of little script on it. You wouldn't even know when you pull these all out. They just look like there's little veins in the greens. So I love this. I love this process. It's very calming. <laughs> if you have a lot going on in your life, this is a good stress reliever. Just do a lot of cutouts of all your little favorite most used items. This is also something great you can do with your dye sentiments. So if you've got 
happy birthday or congratulations or any of those sentiments, then use those on different pattern paper that you might not otherwise use. All right, so now I'm going to start with the flowers. And these are some nice big ones. And this flower background paper, pattern paper, has flowers already on it. But you won't be able to tell that when you see how these cut out. And I'm going to apologize today because I got a new I love this black mat that I got for my desktop because it's just gigantic and I can cut on it. I can make a mess on it. <laughs> and unfortunately, I, I don't think I have the right camera settings yet because I used to have a white background, just my white desk. And it's definitely making everything look a little washed out. I tried to play with the colors and the lighting a little bit, but didn't get it where it needs to be. So I will continue to work on that. And unfortunately, you're not going to get to see all the beauty of this pattern paper because it gets a little washed out with this black background. But isn't that gorgeous? And you can't even tell that it's pattern paper that has flowers in it. So here I, I did cut off a leaf by mistake. I was a little bit too aggressive pulling that out of its dye. Now I'm starting to just play. Don't you love to play with stuff like this? So just trying to see what would these look like if I put these pieces inside of each other or on top of each other. I love to play around with all of my stuff. And so just having a little play here. And again, this sometimes gives me ideas. Now I've got this beautiful, you can't tell very well again because of the camera in the background. It's just not working well together today, but it's got like a little light pink leaf design in the background. And that's going to be really, really pretty on here as well. Later on, I'm going to use this with some butterflies and I will make us a card. So never fear. I always make a card in each of my videos, even when I'm showing a technique like this. And so I have a card coming up. So here I really sped this up because I you guys get how I'm doing this. But I wanted you to be able to see all the different pieces that I made from this. And if you don't already, I love flower dyes. It's one of the things where I don't think I'm very good at kind of making those on my own or stamping them and then cutting them out. I love these because you can layer them, you can curl up the edges, lots of different things you can do with flowers. And I love when there's a set that has different designs in it. And I do keep all my flowers together in these little envelopes that have the magnetic backgrounds, my little dies. Like I said, if I have any leftover that I don't use from this project, I'll stick them all in the back of that envelope and then I can use them another time. So this had little teeny tiny pink flowers and green petals on it and it really came out pretty too. And so again, this is in the same color family. So I'll be able to mix and match these different flowers and use them. Okay, so just next I have, a, this has some pink flowers on it, some green and some gray pieces. And again, all this light pink can all go together. So I'm trying to get them all in the same little family. And so here I am doing the last of it. And you can see I just have a ton of flowers to play with. You can't really tell <laughs> with the lighting, but these are absolutely gorgeous. So last I'm going to pull out my butterflies. And again, I'm going to put it on this background paper, pattern paper that has the little leaf texture. And so then I got distracted and I was like, oh my gosh, these are so gorgeous. What can I do with these? So I start playing and putting them all on top of each other and mixing and matching the different colors. It is so so fun and these are going to be absolutely gorgeous. I love to cut shapes out when I don't really know what I want to do for a card yet. It keeps my mind distracted. It's really a good stress reliever and I'm standing so it's I'm not sitting down so it makes me feel like I'm <laughs> doing something. So here's those butterflies that I cut out and I love this butterfly. She's nice and large and she's got a ton of detail so she will be really pretty on a card and it's nice uh, a nice light color so if I put it on a darker card base that will be absolutely gorgeous. And then the other three that I have, the other three larger ones, or I guess medium-sized ones, they are like 3D butterflies. So they all connect in the center and then they have their little outer leaves that are 3D. So they're really, really pretty. And then there's a couple just little small butterflies that are one-dimensional, but they match really pretty. And, and I like to put them with some of those bigger butterflies. Wait till you see these. They're just gorgeous. If I can remember where I got these, I will definitely put it 
everything I used in the description box below. If I have trouble finding something, I will put something similar and let you know. I always say similar if I can't find exactly what I used. I buy a lot of my stuff at Hobby Lobby and online at Amazon. I also have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator that I buy things from, so I will let you know where I got these from. Loved those butterflies. Okay, now time to make a card. So this is, again, some beautiful background paper, some patterned paper, and these are little half sheets, and this one has a lot of pink in it, so I decided to go with this one that has pink and the blue, and these butterflies are pink, even though it's hard to tell in the light, but they have that like leafy pink background. And then that's just a, a silicone mat. I cut, cut out a little piece. I use it whenever I have little things that I want to paint or stamp. And this is Vintage Photo Distress Oxide. Because the paper looks a little vintage to me, I thought it would be nice to put a little vintage edge around this butterfly. And I'm doing it on each of the layers. And here's where you can see all those different layers. And when you pop those all out, it is just such a pretty butterfly absolutely love these. You can also put some more color if you don't like it being, you know, all kind of that one pattern paper, you can certainly put other colors on here. I didn't think it needed it, even though it's hard to tell with the little bit washed out color on here. The pink butterfly has lots of different shades of pink inside of it, has a little bit of yellow, and then it's got that vintage photo to make it look a little bit older. And I almost put this on the wrong way. <laughs> How many times have we done that? That's just me just not paying attention. But I saved it and we will get it put in the right direction. And this paper actually already has a little teeny black butterfly on it and it's really, really pretty. I'm going to stick this pink butterfly there in the center and I decided because it was out I going to use my tape runner and I just put some on the center because there's going to be so much that I want to pop up with that butterfly. Isn't that just gorgeous? And then I have that little butterfly and I'm just going to bend the center so that the wings stick out a little bit but I'm going to have to use my Barely Art Precision craft glue on this one because the tape runner would have been too much. And then I'm just going to stick the body of her. I wasn't sure where I wanted it to go, but we're going to put her more towards the top. I didn't plan this card out very well, so I do want to put a sentiment on it at some point, making sure that's the right color. <laughs> Even though you can tell from the bottle, sometimes when it comes out, it's feels really dark to me. So I'm just putting a little few little dots on here and trying to make them a little bit smaller as it gets to the bottom of the butterfly. And I like to do this look with butterflies. And then if you don't know, one way to make those dots not look so pointy is to tap on the back of it and then it flattens them a little bit. And then I'm being very bold here because those, <laughs> those little dots are very wet, but I'm going to use my Wink of Stella and put a little bit of glitter on here. And I'm just putting it towards the edge of each wing so that I can make sure that I get a little bit of shine here. And then I'm putting a little bit more on the other butterfly, that little back butterfly. And then I decided, what the heck, I'm going to put a little bit in the center of each flower. When I get my Wink of Stella out, I love it so much that I tend to get a little bit overboard there. I start to put some veins in, in the leaves. <laughs> so if you're like me, let me know in the comments below. I love my Wink of Stella. All right, so this is how I keep some of my pre-cut out dyes, dye sentiments. And I'm looking for one that says you're in my prayers and a sympathy sentiment. We're going to put with sympathy on the outside of the card and then the you're in my prayers I'm going to put on the inside of the card. So I'm taking up my Distress Oxide. This is speckled egg color. It matches a little bit of that blue and green on the outside of the card. So I'm just going to put a little bit so that it's not so white. There's a little too much white in that card so I wanted to make it have a little bit of color and then I'm using that same little dauber to put some of that vintage photo around the edges just to give it that little vintage look as well. Now where to put it, right? <laughs> it seems like there's a lot of stuff congregated towards the top there, but I wasn't sure that I liked it anywhere else. I didn't want to put it on the butterfly because then it would mess up her wings. So we'll put some foam dots and that will have it pop out a little bit. For the most part, this card doesn't have a lot of dimension other than the dots in the center of the butterflies, but these foam dots will pop up the sentiment a little bit. Okay, and I did decide to put her at the top there, even though there's a lot going on in that section. This is probably not my most well-balanced card, but I didn't like it anywhere else. And then in this, uh, since this is going to go on the inside, I kind of wanted to incorporate not only the speckled egg, the blue color, 
but I decided I wanted to put a little bit of pink too. So I'm leaving a little bit of room on either side and I'm going to put a little bit of pink in the center. So this is Tattered Rose and this will be make it look like it's a two colored dual toned sentiment for the inside of the card. Now I'm being very bold here and I am still working on this card that has a wet. <laughs> Those dots are still wet. You'll see I'm going to be very careful and I'm barely going to open it and make sure it doesn't touch the other side of my desk. And then I'm just going to stick this sentiment on the inside and hope for the best. I'm notorious for messing up cards because I'm rushing this and not waiting for it to dry. That is my MO. So <laughs> here we go and hopefully we won't mess up. All right, and then I decided to add another one of those little pink butterflies, and I put a little bit of blue on her body just to give her a little bit of similar look to those colors. I like the way that turned out. It's a very simple card. Stay tuned for part two. I'm going to use some of those gorgeous flowers, and I'm going to fix my lighting on my camera and show you a bunch of other cards with using our pattern paper. Thank you so much for joining me. If you would, please click the like button if you enjoyed this content and also subscribe to my small channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next card video. If you need more pattern paper inspiration, look here for some information on my last video series on pattern paper.